from the John DeVita Broadcast Center. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another broadcast of Paranormal Radio with Bob Trisick on the Windy City Hometown Entertainment Network. So sit back and enjoy Paranormal Radio. And now, here is the number one king of Paranormal Radio, Mr. Bob Trisick. Thank you, John. Thank you very much, sir. It's good to be back again after our summer um, hiatus there. We take a break for the summer there. And it's also good that we're back um, as soon as we are because um, as I think you all know that I had, I had posted on Facebook a couple times and there were so many people, well-wishers, and that, that John had. We did the last show. The last taping we did was June 7th. And I think we had Pete Crapia on, Tony Sabelski, and Jack Chavez. I think someone else was on, too. I'm, I'm sorry if I missed that person, I, you know, if there was another person on there. But anyway, we did that show the 7th, and John had hurt his foot and was just going in for some routine. We do the shows on Monday nights, and then Wednesday that week, he was going in just for some routine x-rays and some checkup and things to see what was going on with the foot. Well, it turned out that it would be nothing more than just him having to wear a brace or something to correct it. He would have been okay. But as he was leaving the hospital, just as fate would have it, he turned in a funny way, fell, and he wound up breaking his hip. So then it became a long stay. So I was expecting us not doing a show, quite honestly, you know, six months or whatever. I had talked to John about it. I, you know, gave a little time to recuperate and everything. And then I called, and I says, you just take all the time you need to recover. Don't worry about doing the show in September again or whatever. You know, just don't worry about it. But here we are. So he, um, he bounced back very quickly, and uh, we're all very grateful for that. So good, John. Thank you uh, very much for that, and um, wish you well, and um, we're glad that you're doing so well. Uh, very happy to be back, uh, Bob. I... I tell you, I didn't expect to spend my summer in a wheelchair, but uh, the whole month of June, I st- I was in Resurrection Hospital between the hospital and the rehab center, and the whole month of July, I sat in a wheelchair right upstairs, and then finally I decided enough, enough is just nonsense, so I just put the chair and in, 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 in locked it up, stood up and start walking, and and uh, just keep on keep on going. I got. I got too many things to take care of between here in Norwich, and of course I have my summer home up in Elkhorn, Wisconsin, and uh, I just yeah, you're made busy. A, you got a lot of things going on. When yeah. you said when you said resurrection, at first I thought you were going to say I spent my summer in Resurrection Cemetery. No, no, <laughs> <laughs> I, I wasn't too far from it though. Yeah. But um, no, I um, uh, I I didn't expect to spend my whole darn summer uh, laying in the hospital, sitting in a wheelchair, and be uh, be a cripple. But anyways, the good Lord helped me. In fact, this past Saturday, 9-11, um, I set up the PA system over at the Irving Park Cemetery, which is about three, four blocks away from me. Oh, here. Ac- Acacia Cemetery? No, no, across the street from Acacia. Oh, Irving Park Cemetery. Yeah. yeah okay, yeah. And mm-hmm. we had a big a big 9-11 um, ceremonies going on over there. Good for you. Yeah, that's, see, sometimes so, that's the best medicine, just yeah. staying busy, doing so, what you can and keeping uh, your mind active. My, and, my, my, my number one, my number one pal in my life, Oscar, who you saw just a little bit ago, he, uh, he's been my right-hand man. He has helped me from day one right up to this very, very moment. And he helped me uh, set up the PA system over there and uh, everything went very well. So, I have to think positive. The only way you get anywhere in this world is by thinking positive. Good for you. That's and a, now, that's nice in the, now at the end of September, September the 26th, I got the big PA system to set up over at Rose Hill Cemetery. Oh, yeah. That's for an the, annual event. For, yeah. for, the, for the memorial service over there. So hopefully um, I'll be able to make it. Good. We hope so, too. Yeah. We don't want to break the tradition. You've been doing that for a number of years. Rose Hill Cemetery, he gets into Rose Hill at like 4 o'clock in the morning. It's dark, and he got his own key. He gets in there, and they let him go in, and he sets everything up, and he goes yep. into Rose Hill. Yeah, yeah. Yep, I've been 80, doing it for 84 about... 84 years old, and this guy does all this, and runs I, two been, houses. I've been too. doing Rose Hill for yeah. almost 20 years. Yeah. Well, any but I tell you, I tell you one thing, Bob. When I go at the Rose Hill Cemetery at that time in the morning, it's very quiet. Of course it is. It's quiet there during the day, too, for that matter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. nobody's out there at 4 in the morning, that's for sure. If you do see somebody out there at 4 o'clock in the morning, you better investigate that and see what, it is, see what it is you're seeing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, let me get to today's show. Uh, today we have a newcomer to Paranormal Radio as well as a repeat uh, that's been here before. We have Miss Kylie O'Connell. 
Hello, and hello. Ki- yeah, hi, Kylie. And she is actually, what, what exactly is your title? You're the director over at the Bridgeview Park District? So I do the event coordinating and program events coordinating. Events coordinator, that's yep. it. She's mm-hmm. the events coordinator. And she's here to talk about some of their fall events and some of their exciting stuff they got going on over there for the Halloween season. Talk about that and talk about some things. Then we'll talk about Neil with Graveside, too, and, and some of their events and things like that. And that's all the, well, that's sort of, some of that's the real paranormal and some of that's just the fun Halloween paranormal stuff that they do and then we have the real paranormal here and that's mr zach wenzel who's been here before too and i'm quite honestly very surprised he came on um i just sent him a message this morning i went to the library before i came over here and sent him a message says, yeah zach you're welcome to come on anytime you know you know that we're doing a show today i says i know that's short notice if you can't do it you can't do it you know i understand that you know he says oh no no you know i don't mind coming he was very polite about it he says i just want to take the time away from kylie or from anybody else or anything he says, no no don't worry about that we'll have enough time for everybody i said if there's multiple people on i says well you know make sure we, even if we run a little longer that we'll make sure everybody has something to say so welcome back zach nice to have you back again it's nice to be back Good. Glad you're here. Yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad we caught you too. This guy is like all over the place. He's he's everywhere. If you look at look up um, Blood Moon Paranormal, go up on Facebook or on YouTube Blood Moon Paranormal, and it's hard to keep up with where he's at. You know, he's, he's just all <laughs> over the place. Matter of fact, as I'm talking to him right now, he might actually even not be here right now. He might be somewhere else. So I don't it's know. Just a ghost sitting yeah, over I there. Think, I think you might like have like a clone or something. There's yeah, like I'm two just of you. I'm just the clone. Yeah. Yep. There's, there's like a couple of you that are around in different places. Kylie. What's going on with the Bridgeview Park District? Start letting us know some of the stuff going on over there. Well, this year, the Bridgeview Park District, usually we're doing a lot more. But since we are having something so big this year, um, we are sticking to our haunted house. That is new for It's a new attraction in Bridgeview. It's called Kilder Haunted City, presented by the Park District. Um, Bridgeview hasn't had a haunted house in about six, seven years now. So really glad to be bringing it back. Haunted Trails used to do um, Frightmare, and now they're not doing it anymore. So to have an attraction back in Bridgeview for the community and for just people in general, it's it's really great. Also, is that why you guys stopped doing the Bridgeview one? Because they were doing Frightmare over at Haunted No. Because um, the Frightmare was real small. They had like a trailer. Yeah, it was, it it was, was like a, a trailer. Yeah, yeah, it was a small one. Um, no, we never, so the park district used to run it, but the guy that used to run it, he just, you know, he retired basically from doing it, moved on to like a uh, daytime job. But now my brother took over, so we're really excited to be doing it. I'm helping him out with it. And he has a partner as well and, you know, some dedicated actors who are there every day to help us build Good. everything too. Yeah, it's a lot of work putting on one of those. Yeah, I can oh, yeah. that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, I've been with um, with Midnight Terror for, for a few years that, since they've been out in Oak Lawn over there. And um, I don't have nothing to do with the haunted house. I, I do. I'm a concession. I do palm readings over there and that. But I can tell you, they put a lot of work and a lot of effort into that, and a lot goes into it ahead of it. As it does in any of the, these events, any of these events you do, there's a lot of planning and stuff, tours or uh, events, lectures, talks, anything like that. There's a lot of stuff that goes into it ahead of time. You know, when people come, you make it look easy, and uh, I guess that's part of what makes it. You know, you know everything went well. Like, if you make it look like it's easy to do, but uh, no one knows how much work. And you've done a couple of those. There's a lot of work that goes into those to make them successful. And to make yeah, them we've been enjoyable. building since January, so yeah. it's been mm-hmm. a long time coming. So we're yeah. really excited. Yeah, it's a lot of work, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And then you guys are doing some other things, too. You're doing, well, I'll be doing one or two tours with you. I'm not sure exactly what. We had two yeah. scheduled, but now it might be just doing one. Yeah, I'm just the one tour, yeah. I'm not sure what date. Yeah, okay. So yeah. we'll be doing that. So we'll be doing a tour over there with them, too. And that will be like the real paranormal. We'll be taking mm-hmm. you around to the some haunted locations yeah. and things, some actual cemeteries and some locations where there's been some activity and some things happening like that. We'll bust you around to that and everything and, and take you there and that. And that will be on, what did we have set up? The 13th? The Maybe I think the I eighth. Was, yeah, 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 the eighth. Saturday. I think it was. Yeah, I think it was like the eighth. Eighth. Yeah, yeah, we did it earlier. So it was the, so that's for October eighth. We got that one set up. Yeah, with that one too. And then now Graveside Paranormal, which mm-hmm. is Neil Gibbons and Steve Lineweber and Me you. Well. Yeah, you're, you're with Graveside now <laughs> I too. Am, and yes. And I'm sort of, kind of, maybe with Graveside. I'm like a little with them. I've done. You're a the couple, ghosts of Graveside. Yeah, I've yeah. done. I've done, a, I've done like a few <laughs> things with them, but I'm not really. I just have a thing about like aligning myself to any one paranormal group in particular and that but um if i was going to i think i would with graveside because i kind of like what they're doing in that anyway they're doing a whole bunch of things and this saturday they have an event out in watsika parapalooza that's parapalooza Parapalooza three Three, yep yeah that will be the third one that's out in watsika illinois now do you know any of the details on that since you're actually officially with graveside yeah so it's going to be an all-day thing it's from i believe 11 to 6 for tours um during the day in the actual roth house and then they'll have uh i think he's having some palm reader psychics food um, some games, bingo, um, just history on the house bingo? as well. Yeah, bingo, ghost bingo. Oh, ghost bingo. Ooh, bingo. Ah, mm-hmm. okay. 
I'll have some prizes for that as well. And then there's an investigation until I believe two in the morning afterwards. Okay, so there's a lot of stuff going on there. Oh that yeah, will be, it's that will be, be this Saturday. Mm-hmm. That's out in Watsika, Illinois. Yep. Rock so house. go up on go up on the Graveside Paranormal on their website, Facebook, or go up on the Graveside page and you can find out some of the details about that cost, how to get there, et cetera, et cetera, so on and so forth. Dang, I'm missing out. You you're are not, You're not out. missing out on anything. You're all over the place. Zach, I don't even want to say what have you been doing lately because it's hard to even keep up with you. Um, what did you, what, you do today before you got here, <laughs> I should say? You, you're all over the place investigating. Zach is with a, a group, Blood, Blood Moon Paranormal. That is Zach's group, and they are just very much all over the place, very much involved with the paranormal and actively investigating, as does Graveside, um, actively investigating you know, actual sites and, and coming up with some substantial evidence for the paranormal. Yeah, I don't. I just worked today. That was a <laughs> pretty easy day. Well, I a good grief. I know. Like every every day, I look at that thing. You're like all over the places. I don't know how this yep. guy does this. You're just everywhere. You're all over. Yep. So I sh- maybe I should say what you do last weekend and what's coming up this weekend. Oh, geez. Uh, yeah. Last weekend, um, I was at Madison Seminary in Madison, Ohio. It's a uh, like a seminary, uh, mental asylum, uh, school, home for Civil War vets. It's been a lot of different things mm. how'd you get in there we rented it mm. yeah ah. it's like 300 bucks i think yeah this well that's not bad some of them are a lot more than that yes. yeah that, this is the trend now there before you say yeah sure you want to come in with a group okay fine go ahead now oh no it's all money yeah you got to pay now to get into these see when i think of a seminary i think of like a priest's a seminary like yes for, for that's priests. what it was at first to the and then it yeah. turned into like a uh, civil war vet home and then it was um a mental asylum, and Jeez. now Adam Kimmel owns it. I don't know if you ever heard of him, but he don't know owns, Adam Kimmel, no. uh, owns like a ton of haunted places. He restores mm. them. Great guy, great guy. I love him. He owns haunted places and restores them. Hmm. Yeah. So he owns uh, Madison Seminary, Fairfield Infirmary, and um, Indiana State San- Sanatorium. Yeah. And with Madison Seminary, he's had that for like five years, and he's like gone through and he's refurnished all of the rooms. And like tries to make it look like it did back in like operation. So hmm, okay, so okay, if it's an actual haunted location and you're going back and you're restoring it, and you're making it like a historic site. Um, gosh, I guess does he generate enough revenue from doing this to to be able to afford that? I mean, I'm I'm guessing if it's property, you've got to pay taxes on that. You got to do maintenance. You got to do upkeep. You've got to have. It's well, got to be done. Is safe, there like know. different packages he offers, or just one standard, like you know, two hours for the three hundred, or is there different? Yeah. I believe he does uh, history tours, uh, flashlight tours, public tours, private tours. Oh, okay, so he's, so he's got a lot of stuff yeah. going on. Okay, yeah, that's, and then that's what I was fine. getting at. Yeah, that's what I was getting at. You got to be doing a lot more things than just one thing to be able to make it. Pan yeah, out. he's actually uh, yeah. hosting a uh, convention there mm, this okay. weekend. I think uh, it's called MadCon, and it has like a ton of vendors there and stuff like that. And won't be able to make it unfortunately, but. Uh, what are you going to be at Watsika with gravesides, or where are you going? Oh, I wish I'm going to miss out on the yeah. bingo. <laughs> kind of upset about it. Yeah, I don't so know. I, I got to see. What, go for I got to see what the ghost. Bi- what is the difference with ghost bingo? I got to ask you about that. So there's actual ghosts that are going to be playing. Ah, uh, I get kidding. it. No, I, it's just it's regular bingo, but he has really cool prizes set up. Got it. Okay. Okay. I get it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I want you to come on the thirtieth if you're free. Come to where I live. I'm doing crazy bingo. I want you to see how I do crazy bingo, crazy bingo and see if you think that would be something your seniors would like over at the Bridgeview Park District. I'm sure the seniors would like anything there. They don't care. <laughs> yeah. Although you'd be surprised. They'll, yeah. they'll voice their opinions if something they don't like, that's for sure. Yeah. So, you got that going on this coming... No, that's what you did last weekend. Right. At the Madison... And now this weekend, what's going on with you? I don't know. I'm about to cancel my plans and do yeah. that thing, to be honest with you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Fun. Go ahead. There's still yeah. tickets for sale, right? Oh, yeah. Of course, on gravesideparanormal.com. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Mm-hmm. See, there you go. Yep. Everything happens for a reason, doesn't it? It does. That's how it works, yeah. Uh, Graveside has a whole bunch of stuff coming up. Um, in, in addition to the Watsika thing, they're running three different tours this year. They're running a nighttime uh, tour. Oh, yeah, the trick-or-treat uh, tour. Yeah, too. the trick-or-treat tour, which will be in collaboration with the Bridgeview Park District. Mm-hmm. They'll be doing like the, a visit to the haunted house as well as a couple of the local cemeteries and things, too. So you'll be doing a little bit of the real paranormal and then a little bit of the just pure-for-fun scare stuff, you know, the scary haunted house type thing like that. And then we'll be doing a daytime tour, too which will be going around to some locations and some cemeteries and things and that and doing some fun stuff with that. So a lot of different things going on with them. Uh, the tour 
dates. Jeez, I don't know what the I, I know the tour dates. It's are like the every I'm weekend. Doing. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, just about every Halloween, every uh, October weekend. I know the 16th, the 23rd, and the 30th. Mm -hmm. Mr. Jack Chavez and I are doing a couple of them with. We're partnering up together, and we're doing a couple of them for a great. Yeah, Jack's side. great. Jack's a great guy. He's yeah, I like great. Jack. Yeah, yeah. And then um, the nighttime tours are probably at on the same dates too. He's got them going. I know that. Yeah, I tried doing that with Midnight Terror a couple of years back. I tried doing that in collaboration with the South, not with South Central Stickney, with the Elsa Park District. I tried doing a, a tour with Midnight Terror where they would visit the haunted house and then do a couple of the local cemeteries, you know, like the Bachelors Grove and the Resurrection, that kind of thing. you know, stuff like that. We were going to do, um, but the trouble was it got to be so expensive. No one did it. Yeah. It was too expensive. And then I was thinking of doing like an actual haunted house tour where you'd pick out like the best of the best of these haunted houses, you know, like Statesville and yeah. Midnight Terror and the Bridgery yeah. One and all these different places that are like the best of the best and go around to those. But the trouble is some of those places are like fifty, sixty dollars for admission. Oh yeah. We tried to keep it for, I mean our our flat rate ticket is twenty dollars, but I think if you're going on a tour it's a little bit cheaper. Um, and then we're not doing group sales this year, but next year we're going to have more options available for sure. The tour, if I'm not mistaken, I looked it up on the Facebook thing, but then I was kind of glancing real quick. I might have that wrong too, but I think it was $60 with the tour and the, and the haunted house together, which isn't that bad, really. It's yeah. not, you know, when you consider like guided tour plus yeah, haunted house. Yeah, I think house. it's like a four or five hour tour, so yeah, it's so it's long. a lot. Yeah, 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 so it's a long thing, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So a lot of stuff going on for the Halloween season. Mm -hmm. um, Kylie also very, very successfully did a couple of years ago the whole convention over there. Uh, what was that, two years ago before the pandemic? Yeah, it was 2019. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she ran a whole conference directly single handedly. She did the whole thing all by herself. She had Mr. Son of Sven Gulli out there. That was the big celebrity. That was the big yeah. draw. And then she had just all sorts of vendors and people and everything like that. And just really well planned out event like that. So, so uh, that's another thing I was actually going to get to talking to. We are going to be having another one. It is confirmed for 2022. Um, obviously, we took the last few years off because of COVID. We didn't know what was going to happen this past year, so I just wanted to play it safe. But we have a projected date of either the 17th or the 24th of September, so keep your dates open, Bob and yep. Zach. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I'm really excited. It's going to be bigger this year. I think we're going to utilize um, a different building as well, um, not just the park district, so it's going to be bigger. Um, and then we're going to have, you know, the food vendors, psychics, Palm readers, um, speakers, workshops, et cetera, investigations. Et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. It's going to be uh, a lot. So it's going to be bigger. Um, that's what I wanted. I want it to be bigger. And, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Boy, good luck with all of that, man. That's a lot well, of work to get one. That's why, see, that, that's what I'm talking about. You're planning this for 2022 and you're already doing it now. That's how these things go. You know, you plan these things way ahead of time like that. You well, know? this is the first I'm yeah. talking about it, too, yeah. so it's just uh, it's being announced on your show now, Bob. Yeah, okay, there you go. Oh, there it is. It's the first year. Okay, you heard it here first. Heard it here the first. Bridge you park, what are you going to name it? It's going to be just part two of the Unknown World and the Animal Paranormal Convention, part okay, two. Okay, part two, un mm -hmm. Unknown World, part two. Yep. Unknown World of the Paranormal. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have Son of there again? I'm going to try and have him. Yeah, if not, there'll be some, some other Some other creatures. celebrities? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Who else could you get? Get some of the ghost hunters. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Oh, they have, <laughs> yeah. She, no, she had a lot of speakers and stuff there the first time. A lot of people that were in the field. Yeah, I had like a lot like of local investigators, which was really nice because they were, yeah, very knowledgeable. Exactly. I think I think you were busy last time. Yeah. Yeah, the haunted house. Yeah. But and then I year. think you invited the Midnight Terror people too. And yeah, they, they, they were. Couldn't come yeah, down. that's so. I wanted to have that a little bit earlier in September, so then the haunted houses can be involved. Yeah. So maybe the 18th will be a better yeah. date. Okay, for that's sure. good. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Okay. Now that's all the. Well, no, that's a little bit of the real paranormal stuff like that, too. But now, Zach, strictly, is none of this no messing around stuff. Zach is just strictly real paranormal, looking for the real ghosts, looking for the real thing, looking for the real evidence. I mean, I act at haunted houses. That's right. You did that, too. I did that yeah. for a little bit. I mean, I'll yeah, be... Yeah, Evil Intentions, right? Yeah. yeah. I don't work there anymore, though. Oh. Yeah, I could. How could he possibly? Jeez. Yeah, you yeah. Can't, can't keep up. <laughs> yeah. No, it... Yeah. <laughs> Long story. Um, no, I'll be acting at uh, Peoria State Hospital. Oh, so you're going to do that again? Yeah, I'm going to be oh. there uh, October 2nd, 8th, and 9th. And then I'll be in Blood Prison at the uh, Ohio State Reformatory over in Ohio. Doing for, right over there, acting over there, yep. too? Oh, uh, October 16th and 17th. And then I'll be acting at the Joliet Prison Haunted House oh, the man. 23rd and 24th. Oh, well, there you so, go. I thought he was through with the... Yeah, uh, I thought he was through apparently with not. <laughs> yeah, I thought, I thought he's just doing strictly the real paranormal. But no, he's still got his foot in the door with all this stuff, too. So, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, I told my girlfriend, I told Emily, I was like, you know, all right, this year we can either go to Salem, Massachusetts, or we can act at a bunch of haunted houses. She chose to act. I'm wow. like, what are you doing? I'm go, like, well, see, I want to go to Salem too. I, I, me and my mom are planning on going like during the week when it's not as busy, and plus mm -hmm. we have the haunted not house during on the October either. Well, 
Oh, no, we were going to go during October. I would not want to go in October. Why? It'd be too busy and too crowded. That's when it's I wanna, the best time oh, to no, go. No, 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 uh, no, no, no. I like to explore things when there aren't a lot of people there. <laughs> Up, you're that's, crazy. That's, no, no, we're, that's uh, why I like to do it. Uh, well, we're hey, I, go, I like to go to New Orleans not during Mardi Gras because I don't want to be elbow to elbow with people. It's nice to be able to go through the houses and go through things and see stuff and that when you're, you know, not yeah. without, the, without the crowds. Salem's fun. You guys should go during the weekend. Yeah, yeah we're can. going next year for oh. sure. Yeah, during October. Mm-hmm. New Orleans is different, though. I feel like it's a little more, I don't know. I don't know the word for it. Out there. It's out there <laughs> yeah. for sure. Oh, yeah. The beads and stuff. <laughs> You it's gotta, a, it's a different. Pla- it's a very. Those. I can tell you one thing. It is a very haunted city. Yeah, New mm-hmm. Orleans is an extremely haunted city. The very first time I was down there, I felt that. No, no question about it. I've heard that yeah, before no, too. No question about very it. It's haunted. an extremely haunted city. Yeah. Um, yeah, it just got a lot of stuff going on down there. Uh, that's for sure. No, no doubt about it. No, no doubt. Yeah, and especially you know a city like that that is surrounded around so much catastrophes and death. And things like that. They've had a history of that. You wonder why it's even there. You know, you wonder why there's a city even there. You know, all throughout its history, you had yellow fever, you had malaria, you had all this stuff killing. You know, a quarter, or fifty percent of your population, and then plus the natural disasters, all the hurricanes, which as of late are getting more and more frequent. You know, they're ever since Katrina. Before Katrina hit New Orleans and, and, the, and the Gulf Coast down there, their biggest hurricane was um, Camille, and that was 1969. Now since Katrina. They're getting them like every two years. They're getting bad. Yeah. Ones. So they're still recovering from the one they just had. So I don't know. It's and the, now there's uh, another one coming to hit. I think like mm-hmm. due to hit any day now. Another one's coming that way. So ay ay ay. Yeah. So any city where you have that kind of disaster and that loss of life and that much going on, you're going to have a lot of paranormal. Yeah. Of it's activity. the uh, it's the yeah. alligators and mosquitoes and snakes for me. I'm good. Yeah, no. Uh, no, no, thank mosquitoes. you. Mosquitoes. <laughs> uh, September. Like if you go now, that's the mosquito season in New Orleans. Yeah. Um, March, April, May, those are, you know, February, March, April, May, those are good times to go. That's a good time to go in the winter mm-hmm. months like that. But then once June, July, August, it gets really hot. A couple of times I went down there in August. It's I'm just very really, big really on bug hot. spray, so. Oh, yeah. yeah. Bug spray. Not only the bug spray, it's the heat and the humidity that kills you down there. It's really hot. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is anywhere down that, in that area. Even Florida's like that, too. But um, Florida doesn't have so much of that. Florida's got an old history, too. They have that, gators, mainly. Oh, yeah, so. they got a lot of gators down there, too, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, New Orleans has that too, but they're not in the city. They're more in the bayous. They kind of keep them out of the city, so that's good. Yeah. Any to hoot. You've been around all over the place. What is like one of the most haunted spots you, you have been to that you really like? This house. Was, this was great. I really like this. There's a lot of activity here. This is great. This is something I really mm-hmm. like. we got good evidence here. Well, Kylie just said my house. Mm-hmm. You would think, because I collect bricks from, like, every haunted place I go to. You collect bricks? From every haunted place I go to. Oh, man. And they're just all in my house. A lot of attachments. So, but no activity at all. Mm. It's weird. Like, you would think maybe there's something attached, but there's mm-hmm. not yeah. at all. Um, I, I collect weird stuff like that, too. You know, a piece <laughs> of a fence and a, a brick from the Grand Canyon and right. a brick from the Willowbrook Ballroom yeah. and, you know, goofy things, you know. Yeah, but... Um, my favorite haunted place I've ever been to. Probably Pennhurst Asylum. Pennhurst Asylum. Yeah. Okay. Asylums are kind of good places for that type mm-hmm. of stuff because you have a lot of a lot of stories there, a lot of tragedy, yes. a lot of death and a lot of a lot of horrible a lot of horrible things happen, especially in the past. Those are my all time favorite to go to. Yeah. Asylums are like Yeah. My crew is kind of sick of going to them because I always <laughs> schedule them, but they're like, Come on, just choose a house for once and I'm like, Okay, I'm sorry. So. There's some good houses out there too that they have a lot of activity. Yeah, in the there. Roth House this weekend. <laughs> yeah, Roth, there you Roth go. <laughs> house, Roth House, the John Humphreys House in Orland. That's a good one too. Yeah. I like that one. I yeah, like John, John Humphreys House. house yeah. is, is a good spot. Yeah, a lot of things. I had some stuff happen in the Humphreys House, which one day we'll talk about. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, there's some good things going on in homes too. Yeah, um, the older the place, the more the history, the stuff you know that goes on. Yeah, mm-hmm. but asylums, especially in years past, you know the treatment of the people that were in those. My gosh, in heavens, you know, you just couldn't possibly. You know, with that amount of tragedy and death and, and things going in that much sorrow, it's going to, you know, a lot of it is just going to be frozen in there. It's going to be, mm-hmm. you know, no, no doubt about it, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, it's crazy because, like, even some of the asylums that, like, were in the past are becoming, like, the, like, uh, nursing homes and stuff like that. So oh, they're converting them over. Into yes, nursing homes? I've, oh. I've seen that happen actually a lot, especially okay. like recently. Uh-huh. And then the nursing homes close down, and then like, hopefully, usually people who are like into the paranormal pick up these places and they start like doing tours there. I've seen that happen a lot recently, 
which so they close yeah. it's a nursing home then they'll close the nursing home yeah and then it'll just be an empty building in mm. what's his name like Adam Kimmel, like yeah, he, Adam Kimmel will go and buy it. Yep, <laughs> and then and then they'll he'll uh, add it to his list of yes. places. And, yes, he's an awesome guy. Like I don't know him. Yeah. I'd like to meet him sometime. Yeah, he's mostly in Ohio. Well, so. I can't meet him. Then I'm not going to Ohio. <laughs> so I'm not, could I could, yeah. but I, I'm not planning on nothing in the near future. I'm where am I going? In, I'm going somewhere in December, but it's nothing, nothing big. But um, yeah, that drive to Ohio, it's terrible. <laughs> I know because I just did it. Drive, is it it's, really? I don't know. It was six hours, so oh, man. and That's you know, long. going there overnight. So like within forty eight hours, I drove twelve hours and stayed up for. Well, that's because you're twenty one years old. I'm an old man. I can't do that anymore. <laughs> I used to do that stuff, but uh, you're not twenty one, Bob. No, no. I, I know you I look, look like it. it but yeah, I, you I, do. <laughs> Sixty four. <laughs> I'm just getting. Too, I'm getting too old for it. <laughs> I don't have the patience. I just don't have the patience for driving anymore. I don't. Yeah, to drive that kind of... I'd rather fly, get there, and okay, and, you know, you rent a car or something when I'm there, fine, okay, and that, but to drive, you know, eight, ten hours or that, uh, I don't know, you know. Maybe if I was in the car with someone else, I could doze off, they could drive, right. and, you know, mm-hmm. I'd drive an hour or two here, but that's about it, you know. Yeah, I just don't, I just don't have the patience for it. You know? yeah. What a monster and Red Bull you'll need. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, all that, and coffee. But yeah. see, coffee doesn't do it for me anymore. I've been drinking coffee so long, I have an immunity to it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with that. Yeah, mm-hmm. Yeah, you'd hate where we're going next year. Where are you going next we're year? We're going all the way to Rhode Island. Oh, a little bitty old Rhode Island there. What are you going to do there? Investigate the Rhode Island Reds, the chickens, or what? Isn't that uh, where the amusement bird? park is? No, we're going, I maybe. I don't know. Yeah, the but old, we're, I think so. Uh, the abandoned one? Yeah. I thought it was Isn't in it, somewhere is that, is that New Jersey? No, New Jersey know. has, um, What am, I'm confusing it. New Jersey has the one, um, Kenobi, Kenobi Park or something. They bought the old um, from the old Chicago amusement park out in Bolingbrook, but it used to be there. They bought the Chicago Loop. Old Chicago? Yeah. They yeah, my mom the, used to tell me about that. Yeah, I, I used to work the there. Thing ever. You used to work there? I used there? to work there. Wow. When I was, yeah, wait. We'll have to talk after the show, because my mom would tell me about it all the time. Oh, I yeah. Back in the day, I worked there. Thing. I worked there for a couple of years, and, that, and then they then they filed bankruptcy. Yeah, they went they went. Kaput. Why would they pull it all down, though? It has so much like, potential. You okay, know? I'll, give you the, I'll give you the short story. And just in case someone doesn't know what this is that we're talking about, out in Bolingbrook, a, a few years, well, actually quite a few years back, about, in the, oh, in the 70s, like 75 or so, they opened up, they got the idea to open up an indoor, the world's first indoor amusement park and shopping center. Great idea, wonderful idea, but there were a few shortcomings on it. You had the amusement park in the middle, and it was the size of six football fields, and then all the way around it, you had shopping. Well, two things they fell short on. One was you're, you're landlocked. Um, the park you really can't expand when you're indoors because you can't put in bigger and better roller coasters. You can't, you know, you're sort of limited. There's just so much you can do indoors, you know. Uh, they tried doing different things with it, but that wasn't working out too well. Uh, and then the shopping, they had all smaller stores and boutiques. They didn't have, like, any big anchor stores or anything that you'd want to, like, go back there and shop for. So that was two things they kind of did wrong from the start there. Uh, they did have some good things, though. They actually introduced Wendy's to the Chicago area. Mm-hmm. The very first Wendy's was in the old Chicago Amusement Park. Uh, and they also had the first corkscrew upside down roller coaster. Oh. And they nicknamed it the Chicago Loop. And I used to work on the Chicago Loop. I used to work on the Loop there. there were Did like you six, go on it? Oh, all the time. <laughs> there were like six of us that used to work on the Loop. And um, yeah, I'd be there all day on Saturdays and Sundays. I'd work there all day in that. And um, the next, the very next year, it was 76, um, Great America opened. And Great oh. America wanted to name their corkscrew roller coaster Chicago Loop. They couldn't get it though because Old Chicago had the patent on it. So they named theirs the Turn of the Century, their roller coaster. And then the very next year, they went for more thrill, and they renamed theirs the Demon. Mm -hmm. But Old Chicago kept the loop. They kept it the loop. But anyway, it was a great idea, but it just didn't work out. And by 1981, the park shut. So it was only there for like five years. It closed. The building remained empty for a number of years. Then finally, in 85, I believe it was, or 86, they tore the whole thing down. They tried doing different things with it, sell it, make it indoor condos and make it different, indoor football fields and sports stadium. Different things, different ideas and things popped up in that. Uh, and nothing just ever seemed to pan out and finally it just became a big white elephant sitting there and they just knocked the whole building down. Uh, the only thing left out there was a sign, Old Chicago Drive. Mm-hmm. There's a sign. That's yeah. where you used to turn right on that road. You used to go, and that was the amusement park. was right there. It's called Old Chicago Drive. That's the only thing left. Uh, there are a couple things there. So like the lions that used to be in front of the building are at the Arena Auto Center mm-hmm. and that. So, yeah. So anybody, Old Chicago kind of went to... I wish I could have saw it. Yeah. The Reno Auto, Auto Center out in Bolingbrook now, the big auto auction place, that occupies the spot there. That occupies that spot. But, uh, yeah, it was kind of a neat thing, but it just, eh, didn't, just didn't work out. Anyway, the Kenobi corkscrew was the Chicago Loop, and they painted it blue. It used to be white when it was the Chicago Loop. They repainted it blue, and it's out in New Jersey at the amusement park out there at the Kenobi, Kenobi Falls, I think it's called. It's 
Kenobi Corkscrew. Anyway, that's enough about roller coasters. <laughs> well, I was going to say, um, I looked it up. It's Lake Shawnee Abandoned Amusement Park oh, in yeah. West Virginia. Mm-hmm. So that's definitely on my Abandoned bucket list. Abandoned amusement parks are creepy places. Oh, it's, def- it's so Ooh. creepy. If you look up yeah. pictures, it's very, very creepy. Yeah, especially when they still have the rides sitting there and stuff, and you'll see, like, seats on the Ferris wheels swinging in the wind and stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's very creepy, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Very eerie. And, like, an abandoned haunted house or something they have in there, and it's really just a freaky-looking, creepy place. Yeah, yeah. And then eventually someone will come down and knock them all down. Um, out in Wisconsin Dells, they used to have a place called Fort Dells, which was another big amusement park type place like that too. And that, of course, is all gone. And there's a shopping plaza there now with a Walgreens and everything like that. And last time I went to the Dells, if you go back there and look around, like back, there's like a little wooded area in there, you can find little traces of where the Fort Dells used to be, like some of the railroad tracks from the little train they used to have going around and stuff like that couple of little things here and there so it's kind of neat to find these little traces of stuff that used to be and that i've always been fascinated by amusement parks always been fascinated i always loved them anyway you guys are all too young to remember john <laughs> remembers riverview real well i remember riverview i remember guys, kitty land kitty land oh, yeah. remember that. Playland. Justice or something no playland. i can't remember playland was playland. Injustice. yeah playland yeah. i'm talking about that one too, now the so. family oh what was the family name that owned playland they actually developed a few amusement park rides the flying scooters they developed. They developed some rides and things like that. And Playland, what what put Playland under? Old Chicago, um, Old Chicago knocked Playland out. Wow. When Old Chicago came in, no one was going to Playland. They were all going out to Bolingbrook. And then that lasted for a couple of years, and that and Playland just decided to fold up, and they closed, I think, in 76. Mm-hmm. And then Great America kind of did the same thing to Old Chicago. My, uh, my mom's friend told me that he got his polio not the vaccine it was or maybe it wasn't for polio it was for something they had to take in a cup it was a pill and it was at playland so i mean if you think about it now they're doing it the same way with covid like they have it at haunted houses they have come get your vaccine and get a free ticket or something yeah like that. yeah mm-hmm. so it's the same way back then mm. if you got your polio shot or whatever it was there you get a free ticket for playland so i thought that yeah. was pretty interesting um up to when i was a kid up to fifth grade i went to a catholic school uh, up to fifth grade and all the ladies that worked in the lunchroom at the catholic school during the summer months they would all work at playland they all sold tickets at playland <laughs> so that was their summer job and then in the fall and the winter they worked at the in the cafeteria at the school now isn't it just fascinating very see i have interesting things to talk about too but no one ever listens to me We're listening about. <laughs> <laughs> but you have more interesting things to talk about we that's what we want to hear about the paranormal stuff and that yeah let me ask you this. What's the best evidence? I mean, a lot of, you know, I've heard a lot. A lot of, I've seen a lot of evidence, and people send me things and, and phone me with things and bring things to me and see this, hear this, look at this. What's the best evidence you got? And you say, yeah, this is something we really got. We can't explain. This really blew us away, and this is really good, sound evidence that the paranormal exists. This is it, hands down. Like caught on camera or like yeah, whatever. not on camera? Caught, caught on camera, okay. not on camera. <laughs> uh, something, a, 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 well, video would be camera, something vocal, you know, a, a recording you picked up, something, yeah. whatever it may be. So um, this was at Pennhurst Asylum, okay. like we were talking about, and uh, we actually weren't recording when this happened at all. Isn't and that I was, the way it all Oh, my is. God. We just put the camera down like 10 seconds before it happened. So we were standing in a room in the second floor of the Devon building, and I was like, all right, like, got the cameras because like nothing's going on i'm like what do you guys want to do do you guys want to go back to the mayflower building or do you want to stay inside the devon building and we were just talking sitting there next thing you know we hear this like loud slamming noise and like i like stopped i was like oh my god and i had like goosebumps i couldn't believe that we like heard that and we went like running towards the direction that it was in and we found this door that was originally propped open shut it's a big heavy metal door and I went to pull on it, and it wasn't at all budging. So I went on the other side, and I, like, I like shoved myself into it. And, like, I had to do it three times before it would open. Hmm. So I'm like, how did that happen? And there was no open windows. There was no drafts. It was in the middle of the building. That's my next Good. question I was going to ask you, because you know how paranormal investigating goes. Okay, mm. what are the logical reasons? When something, you know, somebody ran in there and did it just to fool everybody, whatever right. it may be. Nothing you could find. Nothing that would have caused it to close and then you say okay we have no explanation for this so we've got something out of the norm here meaning it's paranormal and my whole crew was standing right in the same room as me Hmm. so they all heard it the only other person that was in the building was our tour guide and he stands by the front of the door to make sure that nobody comes in the building Hmm. because you're in the middle of the woods 
when you're at Pennhurst. You're in the middle of the woods. There's a couple buildings there for the asylum. Now you have a tour guide that guides yes. your group through. So he just he guides us to each building. Gotcha. So okay. and he stays at the front, and our particular tour guide just sat there and he smoked the entire time, like chain hmm. smoked, like one after another. So, hmm. so when we got down, so there, kind of floored him too. Yes, uh, he heard the noise, uh-huh. but he didn't come running up. He just let it so be. So it wasn't him with a string tied to it, and he pulled it or something. Oh no, I don't think so. But <laughs> we, yeah, yeah. We, <laughs> we went down there. and We asked him, like, "Were you like in the building?" And he's like halfway through a cigarette, like, "No." So it okay. was pretty crazy. I can't believe we weren't recording. Though. I, I yeah, was so it's, mad it's always about it. I know something, you know. <laughs> but a lot of times that's how it is, though. When you're not expecting it, mm-hmm. and you're not, you're not actually even investigating, then something manifests for you. You know, it's, yeah. It's and that's works. that's when I learned to not stop recording. Always or, recording. Yes, or always have some sort of, <laughs> uh, you know, equipment with you, something with you yeah. that you can, you know, have some. But it's always good when you have other people witnessing the same thing, mm-hmm. too. You know, I don't know, how, I don't know how big your group was, six, seven people, eight people, ten, whatever it may be. It's always good that, you know, you have other people that say, yeah, we heard it, too. We were there. We witnessed it. You know, they back the story up, you know, rather than just you by yourself or something, you know. But right. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Good. Kylie's had a lot of experiences, too. I've had a my fair share i would say yeah. oh yeah mm-hmm. now what's the strangest thing you had happen um the strangest thing outside of having the son of sven at your convention <laughs> well <laughs> i don't know what the strangest thing but i would say the scariest thing that's happened to me was i was actually at elgin caspi company and we were in the basement part it was me and one other guy and we were just sitting there asking questions and we had an evp going um and it got really silent and then all of a sudden I got pushed and I was wearing this like crystal necklace th- at the time, but the necklace like string, it was just like a string. It wasn't like a, you know, chain or okay. anything like that. So it got ripped off of my neck and my hair got pulled mm. as I was being pushed. So, so you were actually physically being yes, pushed and the yeah. necklace got taken and off. And huh. it wasn't recorded or anything. We were just on EVP. But then maybe after that happened, five minutes later, we heard like a body. It sounded like being dragged. Oh my. Some kind of bag. It was very, very strange. It was down the hallway, and then we came back upstairs. I was like, I'm done after that. I can't. I don't want to do it anymore. I'm fine. Um, but that was probably the yeah. If it starts getting scariest. a little too scary for you, yeah, yeah. that was mm-hmm. probably the scariest thing. I know yeah. there was some kind of. Um, so then you were actually touched by something, some entity. Yeah. I, okay. I mean, I had them before, before that, but that I've was never, just, I've never had that. Yeah, and it's, it's a very rare yeah. thing. It, it makes yeah. you just cold, like just completely cold yeah. to the touch. Mm-hmm. So, um, I know at Elgin, wasn't there some kind of like shooting in the hallway stairway? Allegedly. Allegedly. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, <laughs> well, we were when we were in the basement part, and you know, they showed mm-hmm. us like the whole other side. They were cleaning up at the time, I think. So it was just like a whole open warehouse part, I believe. But now the Elgin Asylum. It was the casket company, Elgin Casket Company. So it was a casket company, then it became an asylum. Well, no, it, it's Elgin Haunted House, but it was an old casket company. Oh, right? got it. So yeah. it was just a haunt, one yes. of the haunted places that you walked through. But it used to be a casket company, right? But they got had like it. their old part still. Like in the basement. Okay, well, gotcha. In the basement, it wasn't. Was it part of the haunted house? Are I you talking remember. about Left for Dead? I don't remember what it was. It was Usually just... in a casket. Com- well, in a funeral home or a casket company, the showroom would be in the basement. You go down and they have all the models. The showroom and different... in this one was all the way up top. Oh, really? Yeah. The other way around. I, I, trust me, I've done over the years. I've done many funerals, mm-hmm. and when we've had to go pick the yeah, caskets, I, I didn't up, think it was part of the haunt. Like down, you know. Well, where I was, maybe it was. I don't. It was a few years. So ago. you're probably talking about the old section of the building. Yeah, I was. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the basement of that, because it's the hill is it's on a slant. The yeah, whole building. Right. So mm-hmm. technically, the basement is the left for dead area. Mm-hmm. There's like a car in there, I think, and then there's the basement where it's underneath the first floor, mm-hmm. and it's like um, that's where the asylum area is. Yeah, for that's, the that's house. where we were at. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Now, my grand, gosh, way back 100 years ago, my grandmother was in a, mm, a care facility. She was in a, in a nursing home, and it was in Elgin. For life, I can't remember. Maybe my brother Ray would know. I don't know, because he was a little older than me. But uh, she had, well, at that time, it was, it was probably Alzheimer's, but at that time, no one knew. They just said it was senility. So we had to put her in an institution because she was just getting, just getting a little too hard to handle. And I remember going to Elgin to see her, but I just don't know which one it would have been. Uh, I don't know, and I don't even know if that is still open. That is, yeah, because this is now. I was a kid, so this is sixty years ago. So the you know. the mental uh, yeah. institution is still there, maybe and that's it's it, been on maybe, the same property yeah. for honestly the eighteen hundreds. Like, oh, then it, might, it might be the same place. Part of yeah. it is yeah. part, of it. part of it. Yeah, they were. That's actually one of the places that you know the haunt there was actually planning on moving to, mm-hmm. but 
they wanted them to like put a whole new like sewer line in and plus oh, it's yeah. like right by a mental institution like mm. that's weird like mm, yeah. it's a little too much yeah. i know there's one in tinley that's abandoned that's i would love to go to just every time i pass it it looks so interesting I don't in know. tinley yeah it's huge in tinley the old the one that one. used to be the um uh, yeah i want to go to it so bad oh for god's sakes what's the name of it, it it's not it's not a mental facility but they had a lot of, a lot of people used to escape from that place I, for some reason, that pla- from yeah. for some reason that place, a lot of people used to be able to get uh, get out of there. For some reason, I don't know why. Um, maybe it was just easy to get out of. But um, yeah, what the heck is the name of it? I should know. Well, I guess the uh, the one in Elgin. I guess they have like one or two escapees like every year. Uh, so okay. yeah. yeah, I don't know if that's the one you're thinking of. I don't or, know. The, okay. the, but my honestly, my memory of, of this as a kid, we used to go to see my grandmother, and I can remember going a few times. I had a Donald Duck doll. When I was a kid, and we were we climbed like up upstairs, we like way up top at some doorway to get in to go into the place to go see her, and the hat from my Donald Duck fell down. It went all the way down, like all the way down to the bottom, and I cried and cried and cried. And my father had to go all the way down to get this, and, and I can remember that. But that's about all. And I can just remember like great like gray stone, you know, big windows, like like screened windows, that type of thing, like that, and just just not like a nice looking place. Mm-mm. Yeah, you know, not a nice looking. You know, that was my impression of it as a kid, mm-hmm. and that incident I remember. But that's like I said, it's a long time ago. But I don't know the name of it. I'd have, yeah. have to do some research and find that out. Um, I don't think she I don't think she stayed there too long before she passed away. Anyway, but um, yeah. But in those days, you know, they just said it was senility. They didn't know Alzheimer's. You know, like they know now. So, you know, but anyway, yeah, those places have a lot of history to them. Yeah. Some of the treatment stays to use years back too. You know, oh gosh, it was awful. So you know, the shock treatment and the electric shock and the, the cold baths and the different things to try to cure that stuff. And that, you know, not much was known about um, you know insanity and mental illness. Right. You didn't know a whole lot about it. You know, um, Mary Todd Lincoln when she was finally committed by her son Robert to Batavia. That is also still there too, but it's not an active place anymore. But the one she was in was more like a club med type place that mm-hmm. where she where she was in, and uh, she didn't stay there long. She was there for about three months. But the same kind of thing, you know, you just you were there. There was like another mentally retarded girl that was there with her, and she kind of became very good friends with her and that. And then she started writing letters to all her spiritualist friends and everything. And that's how she got out of the asylum and moved to her sister in Springfield. You know, she never moved back to the house that she owned with her husband, with Abraham Lincoln. She never went back to that house to live, but she lived with a sister in Springfield. But um, strangely enough, the Lincoln home in Springfield has its haunts, but nothing with the president. It's Mary Todd Lincoln. They feel her presence there. And I think that would be, too, because now, see, sometimes haunts can be a good thing or a bad thing. And for Mary Todd Lincoln, those were some of the happiest years of her life in that house in Springfield. So it would be kind of a natural thing for your spirit to want to stay there, you know, that type of thing like that. Uh, the children's toys and things kind of roll around there. They hear the sewing machine going. They'll hear, like, skirts rustling going up and down the stairs with they attribute to Mary Todd. But nothing of the president ever seen there. Nothing of him. I need to hoot. Yeah. But asylums are great for this kind of stuff, huh? Yeah. So then, and, and all, <laughs> these, all these abandoned asylums, they turn around, they buy them, and they rent them out, and they do tours on them, and mm-hmm. this is the trend now. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't Which mind if it's if it's a known place. Like, you have some evidence on these places. That, that I wouldn't mind, you know, maybe paying to go into or something like that. But somebody just going and buying, like, an abandoned school or an abandoned warehouse and saying, oh, yeah, it's haunted. There's nothing. It's just a creepy-looking old building. That's all. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I don't well, know. Well, I can appreciate some of the people that do it because the money they make off of it goes directly back into, like restoring the place. It would have to. Yeah. It's got to cost a tremendous amount to keep these, which is probably why some of these places closed in the first place. The upkeep was getting too expensive. Especially if there's like a history behind it too. You oh, know, yeah. it's, it's always nice to have it restored. It just uh, you know, kept how it is. If it's, now if it goes down to the historic registry, I don't know if they get assistance with that. They don't? They don't, no. Because they don't. Um, Madison Seminary is uh, registered as a historical place. Historic yes, place yeah. but they don't get any. The only thing is you can't change anything. When it's on yeah. the historic registry, mm-hmm. if it's painted pink, you got to keep it painted mm-hmm. pink. You can't change. You got to keep things the way it is. Yeah, you know, that kind of stuff. So it's sort of a good thing, sort of a bad thing. Right. On, on one hand, it's good because it can never be torn down because it's on the historic registry, national historic registry. But then the other hand is if you own it and you do want to do remodeling or you want to do improvements or changes, <laughs> you got to go through a lot of red tape to do it because right. it's on the registry and a lot of it has to be done well. It has to be done the way it was done, you know, back in the day and that and. That can be expensive, so I could see that costing a lot of money. Yeah. Valeska X Murder House. Yep. Like that one too. <laughs> I have history with that one. 
So the Lizzie Borden house too, you gotta go to in Fall River. Never been there. Just they just had the anniversary in August. Uh, I think it was August nineteenth or sixteenth or something like that. That was the anniversary of Lizzie Borden's of the ex murder of her father and mother. Yeah. Did you ever see any of the photos of that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. They, they actually took some of the yeah. photos. Yeah. Which they're of course they're all sepia photos. They're very old. You know, from the eighteen nineties. And uh, the mother laying face down, you know, in the pool of blood on the flowered carpet in the upstairs bedroom, and then the father laying on the horsehair sofa, you know, half sitting, taking his nap. You can't even make out his face. Yeah, he's just I know. So that's, really, he's I just think really so bludgeoned, you know. The one of the father is the one I see all the time. Yeah. Like, whenever you look it up, that's, like, almost the first one you see. Yeah, like, sitting on the horsehair sofa. They still have that sofa in that house. The actual sofa? Yeah, the actual sofa's that's in there. It's, and of course, it's been reupholstered. It's not, it's not a horsehair sofa anymore, but they do have it upholstered in black, so it resembles the horsehair. But um, they still have that sofa, yeah. And it's still sitting in that same location. Ugh. Yeah. No. I would Lizzie. not want to have been the person to reupholster that. No. No, I would not want to. No, no, no. The poor braid um, um, maid, uh, Bridget, she had to wash everything. That was her job. She had to go up and clean the blood off the wallpaper, off the furnishings and everything like that. That was her job. She had to go and do that. Of course, after they came in and, you know, 1890, after that. A- 1890s, the investigations were done a little differently than they are now, you know. Mm-hmm. So they, they did photograph it, though. Somebody had the foresight to photograph everything. So that was kind of strange that they did that because that wasn't like a normal procedure for those days. You know? Yeah. And she managed to walk off the hook. I, Yeah. <laughs> That's away. like the same with Felisca, though. Like, you know, all those suspects that they had, not one of them was actually in. One of them admitted to it. I like Reverend George Kelly. He admitted to it, and for whatever reason, they were like, "Nah, it's Get not him." The hook. Yep. Just, just some, they just decided he was just some thrill seeker or something. It couldn't have been him. They found something. Um, same thing with the Grimes sisters. I was there just were, about to bring that up. There yeah, were three. There the were Grimes three sisters. very. There were three very major suspects in the Grimes sisters murder. Um, one was a, a semi-literate person. He couldn't really read or write or anything like that. And he kind of admitted to it and everything. And he but got then, out from good behavior. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. He did, he turned out not That's to do it. And then there was another one that uh, was a prime suspect on it. And then there was another one that was really a good... Well, I could tell you something about that case. But anyway, there was one that was a really good suspect of it. But he got off because of his age. He was 17 years old. That's and the, 17, they couldn't charge him because he had to be a juvenile, you know. The Grime Sisters, that's the one in Blue Island, right? No, or that was... Yeah, yeah. Uh, out in um, Willow Springs there, okay. there on Church Road, okay. where they found the bodies. They were actually at the old Brighton Theater up on Archer Avenue. I used to go to the Brighton when I was a kid. We used to go there to see shows. Mm-hmm. And I remember going there to see Butch Cassidy and a Sundance Kid and MASH on a double feature at the Brighton Theater. I couldn't tell you which seats I sat in. I don't know if they were the ones that the Grimes sisters sat in, but they were at that theater, and that was the last time they were seen alive. Yeah, mm-hmm. they, were, they were there seeing Love Me Tender, Elvis Presley's film. Big Elvis fans. Yeah, yeah, it was the, the case, second time seeing it, I think, right? Oh, second. Yeah. I think they saw it like 15 <laughs> times. Yeah, they My were mom like, said, no, you know what? Of course, went out that one night, never came home. Yeah, they were like devoted Elvis fans. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And then a lot of people in the time now from December 28th to I think it was January 22nd, I believe it was, when they were actually found, when they actually found the bodies in that almost month of a time span. So many people claim to have seen them here and there and here and there and everything in that. And some of it they actually traced down to no, it wasn't them, but it was some that looked like them in that. And um, they don't really know. It's been an unsolved case. Um, a very a, a good friend of mine, Mr. Ray Johnson, Raymond Johnson, a uh, retired Chicago police detective, did a lot, wrote a book about it and did a lot of research on the case and everything like that. And Ray was actually kind of warned because he was getting, it, it's, a, it's an unsolved case. And he was getting very close to actually finding the actual person who may now be gone, but may then have been still alive and was told to kind of back away from it back away from that case and have nothing more to do with it you know some little threats and things were coming his way and that's kind of a shame because Ray's a, just a wonderful super super nice gentleman in that and I didn't want to s- hear about anything like that happening to him but uh, a lot of research into that case yeah mm-hmm. the Emmett Till case too and well Emmett Till's murder was a little different they kind of know who did it but they also got off the hook too yeah, it was just his anniversary, I believe, like a month ago. Emmett Till's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I knew his cousins. I knew the cousins that were with him when he was abducted. Uh, Wheeler Parker and Simeon Wright, they were my, they were coffee buddies of mine when I lived in the summit. We used to have coffee at Dunkin' Donuts in there. Now, he was the one who was dug up a few times, right? Was Emmett Till? Yeah, wasn't he dug up a few times? Once. 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 We're going to be, if we do the tour with Bridger, we're going to the gravesite. We're okay. going to the Emmett Till gravesite over there in Burroughs. We're going over there. I'm going to take you there because I think that's something worth it. Nothing to do with the paranormal, but I think it's worthwhile. It's a little piece of history that I think is worth mentioning. Um, but anyway, I was talking to them one time, and we were talking about the case and everything. And I says, I-, I want you guys to do the radio. 
And I said, it's nothing to do with paranormal, but I want to do it. I think this is a story that I would like to have heard, you know, and that. And they came on and talked, talked about it and everything, and everything they knew about it. And that Simeon has since passed away. Uh, Reverend Parker is, I believe, still alive in Summit. I haven't talked to him in a while, but I believe he's still, he's still around. He's still with us. And uh, they were with him when he was abducted. And he says, Simeon said, they almost took me. They burst into the house, and they grabbed, they went into the one bedroom, and he says, I was in there by himself, and then they went in, there's no, not him, it's another one. They went into the next bedroom, and the two boys were laying in the bed together, and he says, they almost took me, and then he says, no, no, not him, it's the short, chubby one, and they, that was the last they saw of their cousin, Emmett Till, yeah. And that's another case, too, and how people recanted their testimony, you know, they went through the whole trial with it and everything, and... Um, then later on, after the trial was over, something with that, oh, what is that called, where you can't be retried for the same crime? Double Jeopardy. Where they couldn't be retried, they actually went to, like, Newsweek or Time, like, a major magazine, and said, yeah, we, we lied on it, we faked on it, and we actually did it. And then his wife, Carol Bryant, who actually said he was the one that whistled at her or touched her, there's a lot of different stories about that, what exactly transpired. She later on said that that was all not true, too. Yeah, and, I think she, and I think she just passed away a couple of years ago. So she was around all this time, too. Yeah. But it's a shame that that had to happen. But it's, I, we're just getting on this because it's how people can walk away from a crime. Mm -hmm. And the crime never gets solved. And, and, you know, people are, it's not, it's just weird how that could happen. You know, and it still happens in this age, you know. Even though things are, the world's gotten a lot smaller. And news and things and communications are a lot better now than they used to be. But still things happen that no one can explain. Yeah. Know? No, that Velisca thing still, like, it baffles me. Like, everything with it. Because even... After Velisca, that same train line that connected Velisca to like the whole Midwest, there's like a string of axe murders that happen along that train line, and it's like, okay, yes, Reverend George Kelly is the main suspect, but like so is a bunch of other people, and then there's people who are being claimed as suspects for these other cases along that train line, but it has to be one person. There's no way. It's there's no way there, that coincidence is just there. I don't to know. have to have more than one person involved, something's going to leak somewhere. Yeah, I'm saying like Somebody's it's the same person killing oh, the all of these people. Same person doing the same murders. Yes. Oh, because uh, they're all axe murders. The perfect crime. They're all axe murders on the same train route. Someone did that with the Grimes sisters too. After the whole thing was over, and that a few years later, the same thing happened to another person, and it was an unsolved case. Mm -hmm. And this person actually called. Oh, what was the not Patricia? Patricia was the one daughter. Patricia and Barbara were the two daughters. They were the two Grimes sisters, but the mother and said, I did it again, and I got away with it. It's a perfect crime. I know how to do it, and this and that and the other. And they, you know, they tried tracing it down to see who that person Crazy. was. And, you know, yeah. Funny. Unsolved cases, like, that always fascinate me, how it could, someone is able to do that yeah. and slip through the cracks. And, Usually up late watching those. And get, and get away cases, from it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. It's, a, it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Some of that does lead to the paranormal, too. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't it be great if you... Now, this is where the psychics and the mediums come in. They can tell us about this, and they can find this out, and they can work with it, if they're good. If they're, they're good, good. mediums. I've worked with good mediums, and I've worked with mediums that were sort of okay, and then I've worked with mediums that were just plain awful. Some medium rares? Yeah, some, some, med some medium rares, and some mediums <laughs> not even... Some mediums cold, let's put it that way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> some medium cold, some medium rare, and some mediums well done. Some mediums were very good and very spot on. Yeah. What's your opinion on mediums? Have you ever worked with any mediums or just worked with the equipment? Um, I've worked with a, with a couple of mediums. I'm just more of a person of science. So, like, so you don't think too much about the medium's abilities, mm, huh? Emily seems to think that I have a gift. Okay. But I'm just like, I don't know. It's, I don't know. You know what it is? I You're doubting your own. Uh, I run into this a lot with people. Do you doubt your own abilities? Once you, once you get past that doubt of your own abilities, you're going to see you're going to exercise, and it's going to be much, much stronger with you, and much more well-defined and more going. See, that's the scientist in me, though. Like, I just, I need, like, factual stuff. I don't, I can't just do, like, intuition. It has to be, like, facts, okay. you know? The Bible was written by men of faith, not men of science, but yet so many people believe in that. Mm -hmm. If you have the faith and believe in what you're doing and you, and you and trust your instincts and go with your gut on this, trust me on that. It's going to get more developed as time goes on in that. Now, the thing, the one thing that I have trouble with is mediumship classes. How can you take a class that's going to teach you to become a medium? You either have that gift or you don't. Right. You either have the intuition or you don't. You may be able to learn it to a degree, maybe something about it, but I don't think you can develop it enough where you can be taught to be a medium. I don't, I don't think that's possible. It's I like taking a karate class from a person that can't kick above the A lot, of people, a lot of people that I do meet, like when I do what I do, 
I meet people and I say, you know, you have some abilities yourself. And she says, you know, people have been telling me that over the years. And I said, well, why aren't you listening to them? And I says, you know what it is? I can tell you what you're doing. You're kind of doubting your own abilities. You're second guessing mm-hmm. yourself. So once you put some trust in that and, and, and see what you're doing, you're going to see you're going to come out a little ahead of the game on that. You'll, you'll develop right. more and more. You can, Probably you can the feel when you. the universe is putting something out to you. Know, you just, Definitely. You should yeah. go to it. And a lot of people don't because they listen to their heart, not you know, their head. So It's good to listen to them both. Mm-hmm. It is. Yeah, listen it to the head and the heart. Yeah. yeah, Listen to both of them. Yeah. You're a bit of a psychic, right, Kylie? I right. mean, I would not I, I would not deem myself a psychic for sure. Okay. But I definitely am very intuitive. Um, I have felt things and I get more like messages. I've never like talked, you know, physically or anything like that. But I can get messages. I know we were at um, Mahila's church, the spirituality church, and I was able to actually get a name in my head of a little boy and, like, the age and everything, and it was an exact. And then right after, it came up Speaking on Speaking of names. What was that? No, 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 I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, that's happened to me a few times, and now I do. Um, I've been going to meditation a lot, and it's helped me open up more mentally in my mind, so. So it's helped you open up more. Yes. What? And develop it more and more. No, no, I was yes. just something with, oh. with um hmm? with you. I had mentioned that name I don't want to say the name over the air because that person is Right. Remember and I told you something? Yeah. I I can't think of anything else the time I have that happen, so So nothing came to pass with that? I mean he just went on an investigation with us, okay. but yeah. Alright. Okay. Nothing. Just one time, I, I, was, I was one time doing a reading for Zach, mm-hmm. and I said, I don't want to say the name, but I said, who is this person? I said, this is a person that you got to kind of watch out for, and it was, oh my God, we're, I know who that is exactly, and mm-hmm. I, you know why I got the name, I don't know, but sometimes you do yeah. that. And over the last weekend, I had that same name with somebody else, but this, that name was a woman. It wasn't a guy, it was a woman. Hmm. And she's, oh my gosh, yes, she says, I am going through something with her. So I don't know what it is about that name, <laughs> but that name comes up on me, <laughs> but, but it just does, yeah. But anyway, yeah, sometimes you do that. But I think, like, you know, people that have that gift, sometimes I think they're in denial of it. Or like you say, oh, well, no, no, I'm not. That's just, I'm more with the science. I'm, I'm more okay. with the electronics. I'm more with that. You some know, that's, things, that's I, more I the feel sure like some thing. things you definitely can roll out and it's just like, oh, that was the wind or whatever. But Of course, yeah. You really got to look into it. And I, I always try and do the same thing, too. Like, I never, that's why I don't deem myself a psychic or have these abilities because. Uh, See, I don't like to make that, that claim either. What no, happens to me is that, like, I'll have a dream about something, and then, like, all of a sudden, I'll get hit with deja vu and realize I just had a dream about that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's the thing is, I, I was talking to Pete, I think. I think I was talking to Pete about it, and he was like, all right, when that happens, you need to pay attention to the stuff that happens before and after, because it could be a very important event. Mm-hmm. And I kind of did that, and... As far as I'm concerned, nothing came of it. And I'm not saying Pete's wrong, but, like, I just, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Pete and I had a strange incident last year. We both had a dream that we weren't going to live to the end of the year. He dreamt he wasn't going to live, and I dreamt it. I had a dream. I, t- I said, you know, I dreamt that I wasn't going to He said, I had the same dream. I said, all right, we just have to see who makes it to the end. Death you know, date. we got to see who makes it to the end. And then right after uh, Christmas, I was making it to the end, and then, like, the 25th and I got COVID and I thought oh maybe this is going to be my end you know I don't know you know but I'm still here you know so and Pete is still here too I just I just drove by Bachelor's Grove Cemetery I'm convinced he's a ghost because I've never met this man oh you everyone has talked about him I've never met Pete I've been to Bachelor's Grove numerous times oh Pete. my god how do you miss him he's always there I don't know. I, I, there went, I went by, I I went no by there yesterday just going out to my brother's house out in Homer Glen. And sure enough, Pete's car was out there. I was going to stop, but I don't want to go in there in the summer like this because it's just too full of oh, bugs. Yeah, but the bugs eat you alive out there, especially oh, if I'm you don't bring my totally bug spray in there. He's a ghost and only yeah. certain people see him because <laughs> I have never met him. No, never Pete, is, him. Pete is definitely there. He's definitely there. And uh, when you do meet him, you won't forget Pete. He's a good guy. Well, I'm calling him out right now, Pete. Never met you, but yeah. think you're a ghost. Yeah, if, I would have, if I would have stopped there yesterday, I would have invited him to come on today. But I always told him, I said, Pete, whenever you see on Facebook yeah. or anything I'm doing a show, you're always welcome to come on, you know, so, yeah. But uh, he's a good guy. I like Pete a lot. I, li- I like Pete. I worry about Pete. I worry about him. I want to see him do well. I want to see him be okay in that. But um, I like Pete. He's a good guy. And he's very genuine with what he tells you. Mm-hmm. That, that's what I like about him. I like his honesty. You know, I, I like people in the paranormal that they're they're basically just telling you what they saw, what happened to them, and you you take it or you leave it. You know, I'm I'm saying this is what I saw. This I I saw. I heard the door slam. We all heard it and everything like that. And I'm telling you, this is what happened. If you believe me or not, you know, okay, 
I'm not, I'm not losing or gaining anything by telling you the story. Those are people I tend to believe as credible witnesses. You know, now the people that make money off of the stuff that start telling me stories and that, those I sometimes question a little bit because the stories are very exaggerated. Sometimes the stories are embellished on and that because they're sensationalizing it. And those, those sometimes I question. They may have had some experience. I don't doubt everything, but then I start kind of picking it apart and that, and then I see, well, maybe they're just sensationalizing this a little for their own use, you know, for their own good or for their own financial gain or whatever, whatever it may be, whatever, yeah, yeah. Yeah, those shows Dead are... Dead silence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> those shows are uh, sometimes a little bit ridiculous. But it's, it's like, I don't know. Some of them, I'm like, all right, some of the evidence has to be real because you're at, at these haunted places. Yeah, I, and then some of them, it's like, I don't know if I can believe that because, you know, producers are probably saying, like, all right, you have to catch something or, you know, not we're not going to run it. Episode, exactly. Yeah. And with that, it's like, all right... If I ever made it big, and I'm not saying I'm going to because I don't even want to make it that big. That's why you will. I, I will refuse a producer. I'll be like, nope, not doing that. Not going to happen. And I have a feeling that that's not going to run well with them. So but. if Zach Bagans <laughs> approached you and said, I want to produce your show, you would you wouldn't go with him? Zach I mean, I, Zach. I will, but like... <laughs> I'm not going to fake stuff for but under, yeah. No, I, I believe the same thing, too. I would never... I don't want to do anything... If, I, if I'm going to do something, I'm not going to be true and honest about it. I'm, i I got to be true and honest to myself first before I can to anybody else. And if I'm going to do this stuff to fake people to make a few dollars on it or something, I'm really in the wrong business. I mm -hmm. really am. You know, I, I really am doing the wrong thing. And I don't I don't ever want to do that. You know, I, no. Well, that's the thing is, like, even even with those shows, they, you know, they say, oh, we're getting locked down and within, like, one night. They have, like, three days that they spend there. Yeah. You know, during the day, they're spending time, you know, doing interviews, doing, like, B-roll shots and, and doing and three, anything else. three days of all this is edited down into the one-hour yeah. show. And then, like, yeah. you know, every night they're investigating. Sure. But they're making it seem like it's one night. Yeah. And it's like, that must be nice, too, because then you have three nights of getting evidence, right. you know. See, that misleads a lot of folks, too, that maybe come in new to the paranormal. They think, oh, gosh, I'm going to go out there with my camera. I go out to my recorder and I'm going to get all this boom, one, two, three, yeah, like two do. hours. And, yep. <laughs> and, then what, and then when it doesn't happen, they sort of lose interest in it or they become the doubters and say, there's nothing to this paranormal. Yeah. It's all a lot of hogwashing it. Well, you may do this for a lifetime. You know, you may have that one moment, that once in a lifetime thing, you know, that you get. You know, you just, you just don't know how it's going to go. If you happen to be fortunate enough that in 15 minutes you get something, wow, that's fantastic. But that, as we all know, is not always yeah. the case. That's not always the case. And I always tell people whenever they ask me, like, I want to go ghost hunting with you. Well, first of all, I'm going to tell you this right now. If you go with me, you got to understand that it's a lot like fishing. You might not catch anything, right. and you have to have patience. It's a lot of downtime. It's, it's very boring. It's not, it's not the exciting thing people think right. it's going to be. Mm -hmm. And in actuality, I always tell people, I says, a very good deal of what you're doing is you're disproving that the ghosts are there. Because he says, when you hear the door slam or you hear the voice or something, you got to go and you got to look at all the reasons what could have caused that. And when you exhaust all those sources and you have nothing else to go on, then you say, okay, now we do have something out of the norm here that we just cannot explain. Boom. We've got something here. So yeah. that's what it comes down to. I agree with that. Where do they want to get a hold of you if they want to come and visit the Kill Deer thing and do the tours and all that? So they... we're on Facebook and Instagram right now. Also on the Bridgeview Park District's um, homepage for their website, there's a little tab that says Kill Deer Haunted City. Um, also, my phone number, I could just put it out there because it's already on all the flyers and everything. It's 630-670-9837. Uh, and then we also have an, an email. It's info at killderhaunt.com as well. Okay. So um, we're open this October. Um, we're open the first day is October 1st, every weekend, 7 to 11 p.m. So, yeah, come check us out. We'll be there to scare you. Boo. Boo. <laughs> 7 to 11, Kildare Haunted, Haunted City. Haunted City, right in Bridgie, right behind the Bridgie Park District. You actually, uh, so you'll use the Bridgie Park District parking lot, and then there'll be signs everywhere and lights and stuff to walk over to the ticket booth. Um, tickets are twenty dollars, and there's over twenty themes of terror in the whole haunted house. So it's it's indoor and outdoor. It's a uh, old um, kids safety town. So there's a lot of stuff we can utilize there. There's old railroad tracks, cabooses. Just, it's really cool. Choo -choo. Mm -hmm. Start doing some advertising for that tour too. I don't see anything yeah. about the tour. Yeah, no, I know, I know. It's uh. 
the bus and drivers. They, and then when nobody sign, and then when nobody <laughs> signs up for it, then they wonder why. Yeah. Oh, gee, <laughs> <laughs> we wonder why. Upon. See, I'm not about. You know, I mean, don't get me wrong. You know, I like you say, oh, I would never do this for money. Of course I do. I'm no different than anybody else. I like to do a tour or a talk or something like that and get paid for it too, like everybody else does. But that's not my main reason for doing it. That isn't my main thing. You know, if that's what I was doing it for, I'm kind of in the wrong field. I, I need to be doing mm-hmm. something else. You know, something. No, that's 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 not my that's not my goal. In it. That much I can say about that. Nothing against people that do that for a living, but I think there are very few. And there's very very few people that make a full time living out of ghost hunting and that, unless you happen to have like one of the TV shows or something like that. But, mm-hmm. but on that, people don't. You know, it, yeah. it just it's 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 a tough business. Yeah, it's tough. And it's more mm, luck, fortune. Science, timing, right people, right time, right atmosphere, right conditions, you know, everything has to click right, you know. You know how it goes, you know, we've all been through this, you know. And then like you say, sometimes you get that great thing and then son of a gun, nothing's yeah. running, nobody's got a camera, nothing. How did anybody not but get this? But it still this? makes you believe and it still makes you You know what it is though, it's them. They want you to know they're there, they want you to see that, but they don't want to record it. They don't want everybody else mm-hmm. to see it or everybody else to know it. They know what's going on. They do. They're they know, smart they, 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 they know, know how we operate. <laughs> they know how we operate because they've been here. They've been here and they've gone on, and they know how we mortals all work. This is all going to be clear to us. When you, when you leave this world and you go into the next realm, you're going to know all these things. Oh, trust yeah. me. You're going to know. That's what well, I'll be haunting everyone that I know. So. Well, I de- you know, I've told this to multiple people. I says, who's ever around, when, I, when my time comes and I, I leave this world, all I want is on a little flower or card or something there at my funeral, I'll be right back. <sighs> I like that. That's what I want. I want. I'll be right back. You know, a little banner or a little something somewhere there. I'll be right back. I'd like to do BRB. it. Hmm? Be right back. Yeah, I'll be right back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, that was a fast hour. It was a very Anybody fast else hour. has anything else with which to say? How is Emily doing? And she's good. She's good. Yeah, her photos. Like she's been getting. Um, she's been doing really. Uh, I love all oh, the yeah. pictures she's been posting. She's I've been, I've been amazing. looking at that stuff. Because she I'm just. Uh, it, yeah. I want to shoot with her too. I, it's pretty soon. We're trying to plan a date, but I definitely want to shoot with her. She's really, really good photographer. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, she's been because uh, you know COVID stuff is starting to open up, and yeah. uh, she's been doing like the uh, like music stuff, like uh, the shows and whatnot, good, taking good. photos yeah. of bands. So she's been doing that. Oh, recently. speaking of which, Abby, we I found a band, Bachelor's Grove. Oh right, right. That good is the name of the band. <laughs> that's that's in, the girl had on a, a face mask, Bachelor's Grove. And I said, Oh, you got a face mask, Bachelor's Grove. What's what that? She said, that's the name of my band. I said, you got a band named Bachelor's Grove. She said, Oh yeah, we love the cemetery, and we named our band that. And Abby. And so I talk, mentioned that to Kylie. Kylie's getting her to do a night at the haunted house. She's going to play there. And she was going to come on today. She was going to come on. Matter of fact, I saw her this morning at the library. She's at the library, at the Elsa Library where I live. And um, Abby reminds me so much of Emily. Oh, she does. It's unbelievable. She reminds me so much of her with the purple hair and the whole thing and all that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah I think the, they're coming on October 23rd. So if you want to check them out, they'll be at yeah. Kildare Haunted City. Um, I think they're gonna be playing all night, so it, we're pretty excited to have them out. They're a really yeah. good band. They're just they fit the scene for a haunted house perfectly. So. Yeah, and she was gonna come on the show and you know and put a plug in for it. And I said, bring some music or something. We'll play something over the mm-hmm. airwaves for you so people can hear it. Yeah. And that. But then she couldn't because she doesn't drive or whatever, so she couldn't. And then plus she was working today too. So are they on Spotify? Yeah, yeah they're on Spotify. Bachelor's right. Grove is on Check Spotify. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. cool. Mm-hmm. It's amazing the people you just bump into, isn't it? It yeah. is. Yeah, bump in the night. That's what, that's what I like about this business. It's like you start talking to like you. I just happened to chance meet you, and so many people you just happened to chance meet. But you know what it is? I think you're kind of drawn to them. Yeah, yeah we're it, all it, connected in some yeah. way or another. Yeah, we are. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. we're all related too. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, Brothers we all are. Sisters yeah. of the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you could go back far enough, we all came from Adam and Eve. Yeah. If indeed they were the first, you know, we don't mm-hmm. know now. No, scientifically, we don't know if that was really true or not. You know. <laughs> There's actually two creation stories. One, they were already here, and then the other one was when they were made. So, Every religion has a creation story. Yeah, every they religion. do. All every different, every religion. All the same. Even religions that preceded Judeo-Christian um, have some sort of creation, and they're all very similar. So it's interesting that people all have that. That was their explanation for you know, not having the science and... and such that we know but like I say we're going to know all these things you know when I go on to the next world you know we're going to know all the stuff that's going to be Uh uh-huh that's what that was all about now I see I so many years I spent thinking about that and studying that and everything and now I just know it you know you got to tell us then yeah Yeah. you got to tell us well that's why I've said I'm going to be right there (laughs) I'll be right back and I'm going to leave people little messages yeah leave us notes yeah I'm going to leave notes I'm going to write things down and all that and I got to get going with my book too that's my little legacy thing I want to leave I'm talking with this book for like five years I got to get going and write that book. I said, somewhere when I'm no longer around, on some little dusty shelf in the library, sitting under an inch of duck, you know, dust will be this book written by Bob Trasic, you know, 
sitting there. Just give me a, my little legacy I leave to the world, you know. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Some people leave their children and their families, Ned. I'm going to leave a book. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I hope I get a signed copy, though. Yes, you will. Yeah, same. Yeah, you get a signed copy. Everybody will get signed copies. Hopefully I have them done before I depart. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Any to hoot. Zach, what's going on with you? Did you got the plug for yourself? What are you doing? All right, so uh, our YouTube channel, we're uh, Bloodman Paranormal, and we are going to be posting a ton of investigations coming up soon. Uh, we just posted our investigation at Joliet Prison. Uh, that was pretty crazy. We got a lot of good stuff. Um, it's honestly, the way I edited the video is like something you'd see on TV, but like actual evidence, like real evidence. Mm-hmm. So definitely go check that out. And then um, right now I'm working on Westwood High School uh, investigation there. Uh, we and just did an open school or closed school? school closed school. It's closed school. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we're where's working on that right that now. Where's that at, Westwood? Uh, it's in Rudolph, Ohio. Everything's in Ohio. Rudolph. Rudolph. Right there. Yeah. Yeah, so we we uh I'm working on that right now. I'm going to Missouri State Prison coming up not this weekend but the following weekend. Ah. And then we just did Madison Seminary, so that'll be going up. And, uh, yeah, just a ton of investigations yeah. that are going to be posted soon. Jack is so. all over the place. you got to look at their videos, look at his, look at their, look at the Blood Moon page and that, and you'll see all kind of interesting stuff that they're all over the place in that. Also, Gravesite Paranormal, we got to put the word in for them. Uh, Neil Gibbons and Steve Lineweber and Miss Kylie O'Connell here, and I don't know who else is on uh, the team. Shelly as well. Yeah. Oh, Shell, yeah, that's right. Shell. I forgot about Shell. Shell yeah. Ward, yeah, she's always kind of quiet there and in the background, yeah. yeah. Shell's very much part of the group, too, and that, yeah. And, yeah, and me that. and Shelly work really good together. She's also pretty intuitive, so yeah. uh-huh. whenever we're together we're kind of yeah shell ward i forgot about her yeah yeah but look at the gravesite stuff also too their watsika event this year the parapalooza three the 17th which will be saturday starting at what time is that 11 a.m 11 a.m till 6 at least i I think it's 6 6 p.m and then there's an investigation i don't remember the exact time it starts but i know it goes till two or three in the morning now what does that cost is it like a hundred dollars or something or whatever it is um i'm not sure i i don't think it was i think it's sold out though okay for the night they can only take like 13 people, yeah. something like that, because it's a smaller house. Yeah, so. you have to do a smaller group, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, unless yeah. you do two investigations. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So that, and then also to all the tours and everything, Grave Sides got going. They got stuff yeah. going on for the whole month of October there. All so, month. so look that up if you're interested in getting into the paranormal. If you just have a curiosity about this, you want to kind of wet your feet in it a little bit like that. This might be a way to start off, doing it a little bit that way, and kind of investigating some of the stories and some of the things, some of the local lore, the local history, the local paranormal history, and things that happen here. Paranormal and the history go hand in hand. After all, all these people and all these spirits and everything are people that were once here, so the, the, the two kind of work hand in hand with each other. History and the paranormal work hand in hand. Kylie, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for having me, Bob. Absolutely. It's You're welcome. Fun. Come back Come back on anytime you want, Zach. Likewise with you too, sir. Absolutely. Come back anytime you'd feel like coming on here. I know you come all the way from Joliet or something, mm-hmm. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I was actually up. I, I was going to go there, but then I changed my mind about it when I saw what it looked like. There was like a senior apartment <laughs> suites up there. No, no, no. There was like some senior apartments, and I was going to go up there and look at them and check them out because I live in like a senior apartment. Because these look kind of weird, and the rates were kind of good and everything like that. But then when I saw where it was, I said, it's like right on the street. I said, I didn't like that. I like where I'm at. I got landscaping and stuff mm-hmm. around me. And that. Was it by the Menards? I don't know where it was. Okay. It's, um, oh, I forget the street, but it's like right there. There's like a sidewalk, and the street is right there, mm-hmm. and sidewalk, and the street's right there, and there's the building right there. And I said, oh, no, I don't like that. I said, I like where I'm at better. I'm staying where I'm at. Yeah, it's usually how Joliet is. You see it's, it and you're like, not too far from nah, the Joliet like prison, that. though. Oh, okay. It's not too far. So it you're pretty close like, to it. It almost looks like you could walk down there. You know, I know I could because I like to walk anyway. I could do a long walk. But, mm-hmm. but it look, it's not too far from that. They're like right down the road from it. So, yeah. You do history tours there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, history and paranormal and all that. Like you said, they all go hand in hand. Yeah. I love all that stuff. I love doing them. I love doing the, I love doing the tours. You don't make a whole lot of money doing it, but they're just an awful lot of fun to do. They are. They're a lot of fun. Okay, we will do that. What am I doing? I got stuff yeah, what are going you doing, on. Bob? I'm doing. I'm doing all the, the whole month of October. You invited me to come by yours and mm-hmm. do some. And if I have a day here or there, palm I'll sneak and do some palm there. readings over there by the Kildare City. I'll do that. Um, but most of the time, I'll be at Midnight Terror over there on 111th Street, right across from Chapel Hill Cemetery. We got three cemeteries right there on 111. We got St. Casimir's, we got Holy Sepulchre, and Chapel Hill. And Chapel Hill. I always thought it was St. Holy Sepulchre. For like 50 years I thought this, but it was actually where I saw something was actually in Chapel Hill. It's right across from Midnight Terror. Because years ago, Midnight Terror used to be Du Bois Fabrics. It was an upholstery right. warehouse. And I used to do real upholstery, and I used to go there to get my material. One early morning one time during the week, I was going out there and happened to glance across at the cemetery, and something was there that I saw. 
So spooky stuff. Yes, it was a bride at 7:30 in the morning on a rainy September morning. There was a bride standing there with a veil all the way down to the ground. You know, and then I kind of did it's a her. double take. Yeah, I did the double take and did the spin around again, and of course it was gone. You know, right across the street from where I, the place where I'm at now, from Midnight Terror. But then we got to talk about Old Chicago too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's haunted at Old Chicago. No, I don't think. But so. I have an interesting story about Old Chicago too. <laughs> I got interesting stories about everything. <laughs> Don't we all? When we you do. get a little older, you accumulate stories. <laughs> a little older and Okay. Uh, that is about it. Thank you so much, Kylie, for Thanks coming for out. Always, always a pleasure having you here and, and just being with you in that. You're just a wonderful person and very Thank much you. involved with what you do, and you work very hard at what you do, and you're very good at it, too. Thank you. I appreciate that. And you, that. too. You're a hard worker at what you do, too. Thank you. In addition to the work that you do for a living, this is something that you do. This is more your hobby thing than that. And, boy, you put a lot of time and effort into this, too. And I think, whether you want to or not, sir, I think you are going to make it big. I think Thank so you. Too. I think you I are. I appreciate that. I don't, a lot. Think you're, I don't think you're going to have any trouble with that because you're very young right now. What are you, 21, 22 years old? 21. Oh. By the time you get to be 24, you're going to, be, you're going to have something. Yeah. I That's appreciate that. that. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. I give you 24 and start following your inner voices and stuff. Start listening to that. I know. I know. You, I know. I like, the, I like the echo box and I like this better and I like the equipment and all that, everything that I'm more scientific. But start listening to that stuff and trust me on that. Um, I'm a believer in mediums if it's a good one. Okay. I'm a believer in them, yeah. Some people I believe really and truly have that gift. I don't have... A lot of people tell me I'm intuitive. Okay, I'll, if they want to say so, fine. I don't want to make that claim. But as far as being able to com- communicate with the dead, no, I can't communicate with them. I've had experiences with them in that, but I can't conjure them up and I can't communicate with them. That's what mediums can do. And they can see that stuff in that. So start following some of those things. And trust me, I think with you it's going to get a little stronger and stronger as time goes on. Once you start doubting it and start blowing it off as coincidence. It'll get better. Thank you all. Okay, X Files music. Away we go. We will be doing a show in October. Gosh, only knows when. Maybe we will not be doing a show in October. I don't know how October is going to go. Yeah, it's just there's a lot of stuff going on, so we'll see how that goes. Thank you all for listening, folks. It's just a joy doing these shows. John, thank you for letting me have on here. I'm so happy that you're doing well and recovering from your injuries and everything, and that's the best news I could get. And, um, Wow. Everyone enjoy your autumn, enjoy your October season, and we'll be seeing you around at some of these events. Have a great night, folks. Thank you. You have been listening to Paranormal Radio with Bob Trisek on the Windy City Hometown Entertainment Network from the John DeVita Broadcast Center. Paranormal Radio was directed by John DeVita, and a special thanks to our executive producer of Windy City Hometown Entertainment Network, Mr. John Chaconda. This broadcast was pre-recorded on Monday, September the 13th, the year 2021. Until next time, friends, please... Be safe and thanks for listening. Good night all.